Hello and welcome to Doc V, Dr. Virginia. I am so excited you're here. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> so thanks for the invite and the platform. Every time I talk to you, it's just such an incredible energy and gets the creative juices flowing. So I always enjoy our talks. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's that inspired living thing that I'm trying to do now. So <laughs> well, I'm taking that trying word out, the limiting belief, and I'm doing it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it's very hard to eliminate that try word. <laughs> you know, we're so programmed. Uh, they're just, um, I don't know, I don't want to take over the show, girl, but <laughs> you know, I can talk. <laughs> Go for it. I mean, we don't have a solid topic, we're just chatting. <laughs> it's just that, that whole, you know, the cultural conditioning, the social culture conditioning that just puts us into that that mind frame. Um, and we don't even think about inspired living. Like I just had my book launch this morning. It's going on right now, actually on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Uh, yoo yeah. <laughs> I'm a co-author with uh, 22 amazing other authors and uh, it's a project out of uh, Hill House Publishing in Australia. And, um, you know, it's it's all about inspired living and how to ignite that joy in your life. But unfortunately, going back to that whole programming piece I started talking about, you know, life just it keeps us in this crazy cycle, you know, just of insanity. And there's always this noise coming at us and we're constantly in survival mode, you know, that we it, it's hard to slow down to tap into, you know, just to listen to that voice, what I call in actually my chapter um, conscious intuition. Um, you know, just bringing the intuition conscious and, you know, just starting to try to operate that, um, operate in that on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, what girl, look. Inspired uh, living. What does that mean to you? What, how would you define that? You know, absolutely. Um, I would have to say, um, because I wrote a chapter on it, I'll just kind of uh, talk, talk from the chapter, actually. Um, I called it Freedom is Calling think without a box. And I think we talked about this a little bit when you were a guest on my podcast show. Um, so that'll be coming up soon. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just choosing you, you know, choosing you, choosing to do you, be you, first of all, you know, we have to figure out how to be individuals in this collective, right, in life. And oftentimes we're put on these paths, we're wearing these masks, um, you know, I have a closet full of masks, right, <laughs> that I used to wear until, you know, I, I unearth the true me, you know, the authentic me, as a lot of people would um, uh, like to say. And, you know, it's about finding that person, who you are, who you truly are, who you were meant to be, and why you were put on this earth. And that was to walk out, to find, walk out, live your sole purpose. You know, and when you get to that place, um, it's a beautiful thing. It's inspired living, truly, because every day you you just have like this joy. Um, you know, I, I never really processed what that really felt like, looked like, um, but it's based in freedom, freedom to choose, freedom to to chart your course, your direction, you know, set your sails. <laughs> and, um, and when we're in, um, you know, I, I'm in doing this in the entrepreneurial path, right? That's where I found my sole purpose, um, my calling that I'm walking out. But, you know, when we're in the survival, in the survival mode, whether we're in employee, you know, in the workplace or uh, we're out doing our thing, um, you know, changing lives through entrepreneurial path, it's, we have to be in touch with us and not just going through, uh, you know, the daily routine, you know, where literally, you know, we wake up, we get dressed, we brush our teeth, whatever, you know, shower, um, you know, we get in the car, right? It's, it's all process, right? But it's mindless. And the inspired living to me is being a part of and understanding the mindfulness movement and the, um, the creative life design, as I, I called it when I first started uh, working in this area, uh, I was doing the parallelpreneur thing while I was still in employment and, you know, building alternate streams of, of income. Um, and I came up with the concept of creative life design. And it's literally putting your life together, but tapping into that conscious intuition to figure out what that sole purpose is by exploring your passions and so on and so forth. So um, that was a lot to say, inspired living is <laughs> using you and doing it. Kind of like 
inciting incident? Did something happen that prompted you to start following this path? Girl, look, what didn't happen? <laughs> um, I have the, I've been nicknamed the pivot maestro for a reason. <laughs> Uh, life kept happening, you know, it just kept happening. And I was operating in this negative energy the entire time, you know, while I'm pivoting, right, you know, the positive was trying to come out. Um, and, and that's what, you know, when you start talking about, I guess, from an energetic perspective of inspired living, the, the baseline has to do with energy, you know, just um, refocusing the negative to the positive. Um, but yes, tons of things happened. I remember um, the first thing that happened um, when I was preparing to, you know, go in, um, you know, into the armed, ser uh, the armed services, serve my country, um, discovered that I had a an eye condition um, that prevented me from doing that. Mm -hmm. I ended up coming full circle, but you know, if we get there, we'll talk about that. <laughs> you know, ended up working in the uh, the military complex, um, but then that was like the first thing that I. You know, that I when I think back to when did I first start pivoting and, and when did I first kind of get on this path? Um, and, you know, so I had to figure out, OK, well, you know, what are my passions? What are what am I good at? What are my transferable skills? So I ended up, you know, when I went to college, um, you know, I was pursuing that path and then got to graduate school. Life happened. Because, you know, after I finished college, I was kind of like, OK, well, what's next? <laughs> you know, still can't go in service, still has that, the eye condition. <laughs> um, and so I went on to graduate school and, you know, was doing my thing, wasn't very happy in the results I was getting. So I ended up going overseas for a while, studying abroad in gorgeous uh, Salzburg, Austria. And um came back, you know, I was working a full-time job while in um, my doctoral program. And, you know, my father took ill, discovered he was down the road. I was in Indiana at the time, um, discovered he was in Louisville, Kentucky. So I moved him there, was caring for him. I had to figure out, okay, the job I was in, it was too much with the doctoral program. So, you know, just all of these things it's start like you, your soul was calling to you. That yeah. soul purpose was like, hey, pay it attention. Was. It was, and it was telling me, connect the dots. Okay, you have to go through all of these experiences. You have to, you know, meet these people. You have to have this experience, this broad, diverse experience that, you know, when I would go into interviews, people couldn't wrap their heads around. You know, I started creating competency sections in a resume before that was even a thing um, because I was trying to help people digest all of my different skill sets, you know, because I saw it as an asset um, while still speaking to, you know, in the professional summary, you know, what the job was for. But I remember, I think really the pivotal, uh, the pivotal thing that happened was a, a panelist in one of those interviews who asked me, you know, he was trying to digest my resume, apparently couldn't, and was thinking with that box and in that box. And he asked the question, so what is it that you do? And when he asked me that, Carolyn, I tell you, um, there was a shrinking in me, which I had never experienced or felt before, you know, because my mother always taught me I could do whatever I want to do, right? Uh, but life kept beating me down and was reprogramming <laughs> that programming. Mm. And, um, you know, and I walked out of there feeling deject dejected, you know, and honestly a bit, you know, degraded and, and um, you know, felt like my, my skill sets weren't appreciated, so on and so forth. But someone else on that panel then reached out to me. And that was really the beginning of me starting to think without that box. And, um, you know, coming out of the box and connecting the dots, because that program is what is where I started to help students create their life design. I didn't call it that at the time. It was called the Visionary Blueprint. Um, and that was when I was working at Indiana University in Bloomington. Um, but a panelist, he approached me or called me up through, uh, found me and said, hey, you know, you had a great interview. I have this program. I think you would be an awesome fit for it. Um, and that program required you to have diverse skill sets. Yes, specialized, but it valued transferable skills, soft and hard. And he thought without a box, you know, and saw what um, I could bring to the table and how I could, you know, um, help others define their path. So really that was where that kind of started for me. And um, and also around that same time, a few years later, that's when I came up with my company name, Defining Paths. Now it was shelved for a bit because I was still, you know, even though 
I, you know, I was connecting the dots. I still wasn't totally there, Carolyn. <laughs> I was still trying to be secure, right? Mm. You know, in the job market, you know, we think jobs are secure. They're not. <laughs> and this is why it's important to diversify, whether you completely leave them or you do the parallelpreneur thing, but definitely diversifying, um, mm. you know, tapping into that entrepreneurial spirit, you know, figuring out, okay, well, is that a part of your sole purpose or what is your sole purpose period? You know? Yeah. I think it's easier to look back from now. I have found a place where I love what I'm doing and I never thought that I would. Mm -hmm. And I can look back and see how those dots connected and how that path was actually leading me here. Right. But when you aren't at that like end goal. And I'm sure this isn't my final evolution either. Right. How do you see all this mess and make a sense of there is a path towards something here? You know, it really started with tuning into my own, uh, into my own channel, you know, and I talk about that um, in my uh, first book from 2017, Love the Skin You're In, How to Conquer Life Through Divergent Thinking. And really the whole premise of that, I call it my autobiographical love letter to society, um, you know, about social, cultural conditioning, thought processes, um, and, and, you know, my lessons learned from it. But it really started with that journey to love myself in the skin that I was in, literally and figuratively, you know, because I was just, I realized I was on that cycle of insanity, repeating the same mistakes, right? Over and over or, or doing the same thing. You know, um, I don't like to use the term mistakes because actually I believe everything happens for a reason. You know, there, there is no coincidence and, and it's only, you know, it's a lesson learned, right? To, to lead us to that sole purpose. So um, it was really, um, I had a major health issue and it could have taken me out. And it actually ended a two year relationship that I thought you know, was gonna be the last relationship, right? <laughs> you know, uh, the person that I was supposed to marry. But yeah, I finally found him or he found me rather <laughs> at the end of last year. But you know, it took that life event and just changing my perspective on life and sitting with me, just being quiet with me you know, um, we're so codependent in our society and that can be good and it can be bad. And it becomes bad when you lose yourself, who you are, you know, what you're about, who you're supposed to be, you know, and, and we often just um, relegate ourselves to this less than role, as I like to say, as opposed to stepping into our definition of greatness and being more than. Um, so it was just really that life event that got me quiet, um, self-discovery, pers uh, personal development, and writing that book, writing Love the Skin You're In. You know, I thought I was writing for the masses, right? Because, uh, you know, we often say, okay, or, or think uh, when we're doing, doing things for, um, for other people, we don't realize that really it's a healing process for us. It's a teaching process for us. It's coming from some type of lack or pain point in our life, uh, whether present or past, um, you know, and uh, really it was just embracing, embracing my fears and making them my ally. Um, and then using that as the adrenaline, because, you know, I, I'm a fighter. I don't flee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a great quality. I I am not. I I flee from everything. <laughs> but you know, there there is also wisdom, and, and let me let me uh, walk that back a bit. There is also wisdom in knowing when to flee, <laughs> because <laughs> that relationship. You know, I was fighting for my life, but I did choose to flee from that relationship. So mm -hmm. you know, it, it's kind of like living in that strength and vulnerability simultaneously. Yeah, you know, and just finding. Fine that between those yeah 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 because i mean i wouldn't say i would say you have some of both i mean with what you're doing your entrepreneurial your suits your business um you know you're a mom you know you're a wife girl you're doing a thing <laughs> <laughs> that's true i do have some fight in me <laughs> yes, you do yes you do <laughs> yeah i had i had a less dramatic moment of being on my own, spending time with myself in my late twenties. Mm -hmm. And I really wish I had done it sooner. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was hard. I was living alone. I hated living alone because I had gotten very addicted to that codependency, to having always a relationship, always someone there to validate that I'm lovable and mm -hmm. 
you know, being without that was brutal, but it was so valuable and it did help me to grow into a more authentic version of myself that then the right person could fall in love with. Like if he had seen me before that, he wouldn't have recognized his soulmate, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that you're absolutely right. And it, that's, that is so beautiful. You know, I had a bit of an opposite, you know, because I had daddy issues, right? <laughs> I had major daddy issues. My parents divorced when I was 15. I had a wonderful stepfather who, you know, treated me exactly like I was his, you know, um, his blood. Um, but, you know, just going through that process, you know, my father was there, but he wasn't living his sole purpose. So, you know, he was dealing with his own um, pain points and and, you know, and that resulted into, you know, dousing that pain with, you know, not being present and, you know, just other escapes. So, you know, that I, I was translating all of that as a child. Right. You know, and we really all this stuff is really programmed into us by, you know, what, five, seven, eight, somewhere there, but definitely by eight, you know, and uh, and it's it's trauma that we 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 can't digest as children or, you know, thank goodness for our little minds and, and, and we can forget it or it gets buried. Like I had an uncanny ability to bury. Girl, I'm still uncovering my past. <laughs> because I, like, the point I, is remarkably I, powerful at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's like these cycles repeat because people are afraid to face their demons and resolve them. And so they are masking their pain and passing on those masking techniques to their children who then do the same thing. And yeah. it just goes on and on and on. And it's very hard to face those demons and, and try to get to the root of them. It is because we feel shame. You know, we feel you know, that we're not good enough. Um, you know, it, it's, it's playing on our self-worth. You know, and what we're not consciously tapping into, you know, for me, I grew up, you know, in the Christian church. Um, I consider myself a spiritual Christian. Um, you know, I don't judge people for their thoughts, beliefs or what have you. That's not my job. <laughs> um, you know, my job is to love my neighbor as myself. So, you know, as I was growing up um, with, you know, certain thoughts and beliefs and, you know, honestly, there were people, there were amazing people that, um, possibly could have been a part of my life, you know, in a romantic way. Um, but because they didn't fit into a certain box, it, they didn't look exactly the way I wanted them to in those boxes, within boxes, right? <laughs> you know, um, I missed the boat, you know, for that opportunity. And I mean, I clearly know, you know, my honey who I'm engaged to now is my soul, you know, my soulmate. But we, as we meet people, you know, and they depart from our life, you know, it's that whole reason, season, lifetime, which we tend to forget. Um, not everyone is meant to be there for the full time. Not every job is meant to, you're not meant to stay in every job for your entire life, right? Especially if you're unhappy, miserable, and, you know, complaining all the time. Those are signs it's to fit. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not worth it. Don't, yes. don't spend your precious life on that. Girl, look, it is, it's, it's, you know, going back to that whole conversation about what is inspired living, it's following your flow also, you know, just once you find that sole purpose, that thing that makes you happy, that you get out of bed when you're dog tired. And trust me, this week I am dog tired with this lunch. <laughs> with this lunch. I've been on several podcasts. I've been interviewing people, all kinds of things, um, mm -hmm. you know, but like just having this conversation with you, sitting here with you, seeing your face, you know, we would have never connected if I was still doing, you know, if I was still in the work, in the, um, in the workplace. Right. Um, but I just feel life, you know, that exhaustion I was feeling. Now my eyes might be slightly tired, <laughs> but, you know, I feel life flowing through me. And that's that positive energy I was talking about, you know, at the at the front end, you know, and um, it's because it is truly joy, you know, and, um, you know, they, we used to hear all the time about joy, unspeakable joy, right? Growing up again in the church. And I now know what that feels like, what it looks like, because my body, uh, you know, this last time when I finally decided to stop doing the parallelpreneur thing and choose me, focus on me, girl, my body started to shut down. You know, I was literally functioning like someone who was, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old. And, <laughs> and 
that was not that was not cool. <laughs> it was a wake up call, you know, and it was because of the stress levels that I had working in the Pentagon. You know, I'd been um, overseas in foreign service for a while. And, you know, those those last two experiences, girl, it was literally I felt like I was in a life and death situation, you know, because you're dealing with all kind of hostilities, discrimination, all that, you know, um, particularly women in the workplace. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for for folks who may or may not know what they're doing. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's when you when you call it to their attention and, and things continue or escalate, then you tend to think they do know what they're doing. <laughs> so, I, of stress when you're in that constant fight or flight, panic, yeah. stressful situation. Yes. The toll on your health is just incredible. It's Absolutely. Really yeah. And, and that's that whole survival thing. That's when you have no possibility of tapping into to living inspired, um, finding that time freedom, that, you know, that uh, financial freedom. Because think about it, when you're on, when you're in the job market, when you are under someone else's employee, one, there's only one ladder for you to climb, right? <laughs> in, in, in that structure, one person at a time. But two, you're locked into a wage. And the beautiful thing about, uh, when you think about on, the entrepreneurial path from, you know, the inspired living perspective, it's it's you're not wage based. Um, you're profit. Right. And your possibilities of what you make, it, it's on you. So it's embracing that fear that you can't actually profit, you know, uh, in life <laughs> in life, love and business. <laughs> it's a hard one. I mean, our inner critic tells us you're not good enough. You'll never make it. You won't be able to do this. And then there's all those society messages too, that are like, well, you know, you weren't born rich. You didn't have all these advantages. So right. don't bother mm -hmm. trying. And I'm like, there's gotta be a balance there. Like I appreciate acknowledging that. Yeah. Some people did have some major advantages to this, you know, however they define success. Right. That doesn't mean like then give up on your dreams. You know? Exactly. But but girl, what, folks have stopped dreaming, mm. you know, because life is just it's been beating us down, particularly here in America. <laughs> you know, life has just been beating us you down know, on many levels. <laughs> yes. You know, and and it's like. You know, I don't know if you remember. Look, we're, I'm dating us, but do you remember? Do you remember the movie School Days, Spike Lee? Do you ever watch yeah. it? At the end, the guy is screaming, "Wake up!" and he's just screaming it over and over and over again. You know, and ringing this loud bell, you know, to wake folks up. And then they finally kind of start falling out of where you know their respective places in their pajamas. You know, however they went to sleep you know, and trying to wake up. And I feel like that's where we're living. You know, that's where we're living right now. Um, you know, and we're just trying to stay in our little silos, just trying to keep what we have, you know, not understanding that if we did come together, if we did find our willpower and found our strength in unity while respecting and being individuals, that, you know, we're just capable of so much more and we could literally change the world. I mean, definitely change our country, but definitely change the world. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've kind of given up hope on our country, but change ourselves and live in a happier state. I know we can do that. We can. We can, you know, and this is why, you know, uh, within my company, I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, Defining Paths, we, we actually help people heal, rebuild, and transform their lives and online businesses because we're in the business of creating purposed entrepreneurs um, to change the world. Uh, we help them see with true vision and, and be their own boss in mind, body, soul, and business. Because the reason so many of us, are, why, I think why we have all this conflict uh, in, 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 our, um, in our country is because of one, the history, okay, that's obvious, but really the core, the history is two, but the core is we don't know who we are individually. We've been programmed to think the way that our parents thought and the parents, their parents thought and so on and so forth. We have not started to think for ourselves, think without that box. And the way you start to do that is really embracing yourself, going down that personal development that, and finding that self-love so that you can give love to other people. 
you can't, you know, really hit the nail on the head earlier too, about the hanging on so tight to what we already have, the amount of fear that's wrapped up in that, that we're, that we're going to lose if we take any risk, if we step outside that box. Yes, absolutely. You know, and for folks who are out there doing the entrepreneurial things like, you know, you and I were hosting, you know, lives and podcasts, that things, you know, trying to get the message out, you know, um, take advantage of this global world now to, to just spread love and the message. And, you know, I'm a part of um, several organizations. One that immediately comes to mind is the Evolutionary Business Council, in which, you know, this is a group of folks who mostly are quite well to do, who are doing good in the world. Um, by, you know, through their programs or their philanthropy or, or you name it, right? You know, they they have, <laughs> you know, woken up, <laughs> you know, and, and waking up is, an, is a constant process. It's an evolutionary process, right? Because every time we think we, we are awake to, to this thing, this other thing happens and we realize, oh, hold on, let, let's- There's even more waking up to do, that's so true. There's more waking up to do, right? So, you know, I hate the fact that folks have, you know, have just, uh, you know, the political world has hijacked the term woke. You know, I even thought about calling my podcast hashtag woke. Um, but, you know, I didn't want to get into that whole political conversation because I consider myself an independent and I make my own choices. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's so uh, it's necessary. It's necessary for us to wake up to our circumstances, our situation, examine why we're in lack, examine why we're unhappy, examine, you know, examine our life. And, and the sole purpose that's trying to find you. Yes. To communicate. Yes, girl, you know, and just, and, and get into action. One baby step at a time. If you're not a sprinter like me, you know, I, I sprint, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, just one step at a time, you know, just start pivoting, you know, pivot. Pivot out of that mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so is mm -hmm. there an, a first actionable step that you would suggest to people who are curious about exploring themselves and their sole purpose? Yes. The first question, uh, really, it starts with, with self-awareness. And the first question I would ask myself is, am I truly happy? You know, stand in a mirror, look at yourself and ask yourself, are you truly happy? You know, and then attach that to the different areas of your life. Am I truly happy in my job? Am I truly happy with this group of friends? Because, you know, well-meaning or not, um, you know, a lot of friends, sometimes your circle might be pulling you down and it might be in keeping you from growing and keeping you from changing. And change is growth. We fear growth. We fear change, therefore we can't grow, is what I meant to say. Mm. So, you know, I think really just getting getting in the mirror, get in the mirror, folks. <laughs> um, start to become self-aware by asking yourself that question. You know, and once you ask yourself that question, start asking a series of why. Why are you not happy in that job? Why are you not happy with your friends? Why are you not happy in this relationship? You know, and just keep keep asking yourself why, because you always have to answer that question, right? And it can't just be a simple yes, no. It has it causes you to dig deeper. And then once you kind of get stuck, <laughs> you know, with that last why, then what are you gonna do about it is the next question. And then start just planning that out, start thinking about it. What can you do to pivot? And for everyone, it's different. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. It's simple. It's easy. Um, yeah. So I, I used to, Carolyn, look, this is, I don't know if I've ever said this on the air before, but I used to hate looking in the mirror. Really? One, I didn't like how I, you know, I didn't like me. Um, you know, I didn't, uh, and it was, it's all in the mind. You know, it's how we see ourselves. And I would avoid mirrors, you know, and even when I started trying to come out of that, there was always a flaw that I found or always something that I didn't like. Mm. Girl, now I'll roll out of my place. I don't have a stitch of makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell you back to that book that you were love the skin you're in. It's not always easy. It's not. It's a, and it's a journey. It's a constant journey. So don't ever think you're going to fix it all. 
Um, you know, that's the first thing. You know, I like to say we're we're perfectly perfect in our imperfection. Mm. So, you know, just accepting that, you know, we're all uniquely divinely made. We were not supposed to look the same. We were not supposed to have the same, you know, skin color, face, hair, none of that. You know, that really that, don't that, be. <laughs> one would be boring as hell, right? <laughs> But two, you know, it's we're just not supposed to. And it's it's understanding these basic principles and facts of life, which, again, we don't think for ourselves because we're too busy being um, inundated by media or um, it's how we were raised, you know, because that was what our parents knew and the only way they know how to raise and and they hadn't um, broken out of. Uh, or pursued any type of personal development. Because really think about it, it's really been a movement or a thing over the past couple of decades. Yeah, so, I know. would say I've been, I've been very lucky. My parents did a lot of self-discovery in the mm -hmm. 60s mm -hmm. and they moved away from the, the, the kind of toxicness of their origin families, you know, in very, very different ways. But... Mm -hmm they made it a priority to dig into who who am i and you know the bigger picture of the world and spirituality and and all of that so um mm -hmm. i appreciate that they did that hard work and mm -hmm. there was a kind of cultural movement towards that during that time and i think maybe we need a new cultural shift to to start dreaming again like you said, where people have stopped dreaming and are just stuck in this tiny fear box. Right, right. Here's a thought, right? You know, here's a thought and how to bring our country back, right? How about we get rid of these census boxes that require us to check what our skin color looks like or what our ethnic groups are, our race, right? Why do we need that? We're all Americans. We're here. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even know. I mean, maybe there's some reason behind it that I am too like disconnected to understand. So I'm like, I can't say for certain whether maybe there's a good purpose for that. But boy, hey, I, I don't like it. I really don't think so. <laughs> when you think about it, I mean, because you you can play the why game with that, right? And keep going, and like, and you'll run out of whys. <laughs> and so you know, it's it's. It's it's just crazy, um, just the conflicts that we have in life. But you know, we're set up to compete or to to be angry because of the situation. We're not living inspired, so we're angry, right? <laughs> we're angry because we're not free. <laughs> we don't we haven't put our hands on it or or hit the nail on the head um, because we're you know we're trying to figure out what it is. Why am I not happy? And we want to blame everybody else or everything else. Oh, let me tell you, that's a lesson I'm trying to teach my six-year-old right now. Boy, <laughs> he is very happy to blame other people. I'm crying because you made me blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Trying to help him to understand that, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're you in control of your emotions. And yeah, yeah. You can't force that, you know. Very true. Very true. Yeah. So, you know, we have a lot of uh, a lot of healing to do you know, around the world, but also, you know, here in America, because right now, our, you know, the great experiment, um, we're hurting <laughs> and yeah. we are not winning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my relatives who are people of color have left. They moved to Europe. A lot of people have, a lot of people have actually. It's scary. Um, it's scary. It's sad. You know, I, I think that's the biggest commentary because, you know, as Americans, we, we are, we are prideful, you know, um, and I guess when I think about that, uh, that saying pride goes before fall, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's it's pivoting and coming back to appreciation and patriotism and not making patriotism a bad word. Or if you're a certain skin color, you can't be a patriot or you don't even belong here or whatever, you know. Um, yeah, very hard lines that are getting drawn, which is, again, yeah. it's like the boxes. It's like it's making those boxes box. tighter and more defined. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're comfortable for people. They don't have to challenge their thoughts. They don't have to challenge their upbringing. They don't have to look at their parents and say, um, 
I don't think you taught me, <laughs> you know, the right way to love or, or um, you know, just whatever, you know, the commentary would be. You don't have to question your parents and how you were brought up. So it's like to come out of that box, to think without the box is a negative, has a negative connotation on, um, on the individual and their life, their lifestyle, their, you know, yeah, ancestry or what have you. Especially in the beginning, it's very disruptive. It's disruptive, but that's what, that's why we do what we do, right? We're here to disrupt. And <laughs> we're here to decide where there's yeah. joy. <laughs> yeah, we're here to disrupt and, and be those voices, you know, to help people live a better life, you know, a, a, a freer life. Um, and whatever our sole purpose, our callings are, you know, with you, I mean, what you do, I mean, you're helping entrepreneurs, you know, with time freedom, you know, and, and saving them money. And um, yeah, and I would say a big part of my mission is exactly like you said, to uplift and amplify the voices of people who are doing great work for the world, because sometimes they don't know how to be heard. Absolutely. And that I can help with in the background and get people who are doing great things, more visibility. Girl, and I tell you what, when I read that, that I was sold on you already from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it's, 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 it's just finding, finding that, um, that space, that place to be a servant leader and understand that, you know, you're not just meant to be born, live and die. You're meant to be born, live. <laughs> You know, and 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 find that joy, find the reason you're here, walk in it, you know, mm. and then the soul returns. So, um, yeah, so I just <laughs> encourage everyone to, you know, just embrace that, you know, and don't, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Your friends might not like you. There are billions of other people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, it's that codependency thing, you know, and um, it, it's it can really be detrimental and it keeps us in these dysfunctional relationships. Most most of us, you know, until I woke up <laughs> and, you know, and did the personal development work and, and just started, you know, um, you know, pursuing this this forward path. Most of us walk around, we're functioning dysfunctionals for our entire lives. Mm. We think that that dysfunctional is just relegated to people who have addictions. No, <laughs> we have an addiction to codependency. We have an addiction to the life we live. We have an addiction to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So an addiction to anything is yeah. dangerous and it's detrimental. So, yeah. Awesome. We, have well, we should wrap things up. <laughs> So uh, you had a book come out and it just launched today. Yes. Inspired Living. Yes. So inspired Living. That and your website, I believe, is linked in the description. Is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, if folks want to know a bit more about what I'm up to also, I have a link tree. So uh, what is link tree? L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E forward slash defining paths. Um, you can get uh, downloads and freebies that I have there. Uh, if you're a woman leader, come to our women's wellness retreat on the gorgeous island of Isla Mujeres, October 17th through the 21st. You can find out more about that at Defining Paths that online. And Carolyn, you should come, girl. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you so much for making the time to talk with me today and to share your wisdom with everyone here and uh we're gonna wrap it up thank you all right absolutely thank you so much for having me